Welcome to Ash Wednesday. It's a very 2021 Ash Wednesday. Generally, it's not this dark and solemn of an occasion, but this year, in addition to remembering our faults, our failures, our wanderings, and our fallings, we're reminded of them separately. We are still socially distancing and we are apart from each other. There are a number of ways that you can engage with Christ Church this Ash Wednesday. I pray that this video will be meaningful, but please look to find the other resources that we've made available as well. But for now, I ask that you join me in an opening prayer. Creator God, there is a rumbling in us that won't let go. It stirs in us like the wind stirs leaves, inviting us to more, drawing us forth. When we're quiet, we know that rumble is the Holy Spirit, dancing love awake in us. So we're here, and we're still and we're quiet. And on this first day of Lent, we're asking you to draw near. As we hear your scriptures read aloud, open the door for us to move. Invite us in. Rumble us awake. Gratefully we pray. Amen. The scripture we have to guide us this day is Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 to 12. Shout out, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me, and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that partaked in righteousness and do not forsake the ordinance of their God, they ask me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own intent on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Book. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will make not your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the throngs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring homeless poor into your house? when you see the naked to cover them and to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like a dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, said the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and God will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of your finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden like a spring of water whose waters never fail. 
Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called to repair the breach and restore the streets to live in. Hear what the Spirit saying to you this day. Amen. Lent is the beginning of new season. Lent is a time of fasting, a time of intentionality, a time of looking to God with different lenses on. In our northern climate here, it's a time where we see suffering, where everything's a little bit harder, where sometimes our neighbors could use a little more care. Lent continues to be a season that's important for life in the church as it calls us to pause. It calls us to cease the daily workings. It calls us to imagine different things, to join in different rituals, and to be present with each other in different ways. This is no exception. This year has been about different things. It's been about finding what works to seek your spiritual center. It's been about figuring out how to maintain relationships when we can't be near each other. I pray that as we go on this Lenten journey together, we might find things that draw us into deeper connection with each other and with God. I pray that we might focus on loosing the yokes of injustice. I pray that we might indeed seek to be repairers of the breach, wherever that might be needed, and in whatever way we can help with the work. Things aren't going to change overnight. Things aren't going to happen in a blink of an eye, but yet. We're called to see with new lenses and to see how this work might be lived out in our lives. Generally, we take the palms from Palm Sunday of last year, burn them, and grind the ashes with oil to make the anointing ashes for this day. I have something different to propose. As we have a tradition of lighting candles, candle soot has for millennia been used as a marker. Candle soot is somewhat more permanent than our traditional ashes. But yet, it's something different and something poignant. It's important to remember that imposition of ashes is fraught and dangerous this year as in the traditional sense it means that you are touched and in close proximity with another human being often outside of your pod. So I ask you to do something different this year. If you have a candle, if you have candle soot, I invite you to take some of that soot and wear it with remembrance that we're seeing something different this year. We're called to a different place and we're called to see with new lenses our God and the way that God calls us into work. If you would, join me in a closing prayer. God of open doors, open arms, and open convictions, we know deep in our souls that you are forever inviting us in, again and again, 
you invite us to take another step closer, another step deeper, another step further in this journey of faith. So with your invitation in our hands, we pray for strength and wisdom. Show us the next right step in this journey. We are here. You are here. And this is holy ground. May this Lenten journey begin once again. Gratefully we pray in your name. Amen. Take us by the hand and lead us. Lead us through the desert sands. Bring us light.